I am incredibly grateful that I do not just have my video footage and memories of my first day afloat, but also the following diary entry. Now this big moleskin could be very interesting in the future, that's now the Dan's boat book um, and you'll be seeing more from that soon. Got here, uh, the 24th of July 2012. I had a phone call from the marina at about 9.30 this morning. I could have Tilly at noon. Thanks to an impromptu lift in the car from my nan and grandad, I was able to make it there in time. As luck had it, we arrived moments before the current owner. He immediately took us in his car down to Tilly to show us around and explain a few of the features on board, boiler, water pump, etc. I call him the current owner, but I suppose that is now me. He was the kindly type and managed to settle all of my main concerns about Tilly's innards in his Scottish accent. After a short but information-packed time on board, we drove back to the marina office. His wife had been busy signing all the relevant paperwork while we were out. This meant a quick handshake and they were off on their newly boat-free life. I sat down and signed two or maybe three lines and that was it. At 12.44 I walked out of the office with the keys in my hand and the title of boat owner. Most of the afternoon was spent cleaning and tidying, with the occasional moment of being absolutely overwhelmed by the day's events. After eating our first meal of crisps and sandwiches on board, my nan and grandad had gone home, leaving me to settle in. I feel that without all the work to be done on board, I could have just sat down and cried for hours on end, without ever knowing exactly why. Everything except the shower room and toilet is now rigorously cleaned. Not necessarily tidy or presentable, but at the very least, very clean. It has been an incredible day for the weather too. Blazing sun all day long. All windows and doors were open as far as they could be for the first four hours on board. I need to get a hook on the stern door rather than using a bucket full of coal as a doorstop. As I write this, the evening cool is coming, so only the back door and one stable door is open, plus a few windows. A very warm day indeed. Looking around, I can see a huge amount of small jobs that need doing. Painting, cleaning, tinkering with fittings and minor woodwork. I can't wait to get a clear run at fixing her up properly when we get home. I suppose I am home really. What a thought. In mid-afternoon I had a stroll down the towpath in both directions. Loads of incredible boats around. I couldn't resist a walk around the village either. A lovely little place that I almost don't want to leave. The farm shop that is visible across the canal from the windows of Tilly was also on my agenda and some ginger biscuits were a must buy. The time spent walking around was almost too perfect a scenario to be real. Well, I have been writing this, around 6 in the evening, a few boats have passed and the odd sensation of having everything around you start rocking slightly was off-putting but something I feel I will soon be used to. There is a railway that runs along a bank past the farm shop and every so often a huge virgin train will rock it along and reflect the sun straight into Tilly. Earlier on, while I was in the kitchen, I could see dozens of fish swimming around outside. Then, perfectly timed, a dragonfly buzzed past and landed on the tip of the bow. It was the ultimate scene of being close to nature and just one of the moments today that let me know I have wanted this life more than I ever dared to acknowledge and that I am finally living the dream.